Hey guys, what's up? This is Andrew for TrendSenses.com. So in this video, I would like to show you something a little bit different from what I usually uh, showing you. I would like to release the masterclass that I've created actually one year ago on the different Elliott Wave patterns and how to use it. So I'm going to release that in five parts. So today is going to be about the motive waves. Uh, once again, this was created one year ago and was available in the membership area where I'm going to now post a new masterclass. And this one was for free. So I think it's uh, very fair that I share it with everyone. So the maximum of people can benefit from it. So please smash that like button, give me a comment and let's get this video some views. Let's get into it. In the 1930s, Ralph S. and Elliot discovered that market prices trend and reverse into recognizable patterns, which can be explained by group behavioral or mass psychology mechanisms. He observed that markets progression unfolds in waves, just like anything in this world that is growing. He noticed that the forms repeat themselves forever at different time degrees just like fractals and therefore have predictive value. He called this phenomenon the wave principle. His theory, which took him a lifetime, is still today the most used and the best forecasting tool in existence when it comes to trading and I'm going to show you guys how this is working and how to use it. Let's get into it. Yes, this is Andrew for ChainSenses.com. So welcome in my first masterclass. I'm very excited you guys decided to join the Elliott Waves program. You are going to learn here an incredible amount of information because I put really a hard work into this one as all the team did. And you know, it's not like my other YouTube videos where of course I put a hard work, but here I decided to go really in depth of this theory, theory that is coming from a book that I read that is not easy to read guys. It's called Idiot Wave Principle written by Frost and Fletcher in the 1980s, something like this. Uh, Ralphus and Idiot is actually from the 30s, as you saw in the short video clip introduction. And basically the theory is about market structure. It's basically saying that the market is developing into waves. So there are different waves. We're going to see all of them. You know, there are basically five patterns. And once you understand where you are in the wave development, which wave is actually developing at the time you are trading, you are going to be able to use the other technical indicators much better and to improve your trading results. So I'm not sure what is your goal, guys, if it's just to make, you know, some a quick cash in a short uh, period of time or if it's to be like a long-term investor that is profitable in the long term. Uh, but anyways, Elliott Wave principle is going to help you to achieve those uh, goals. So let's begin. We are going to see first the five different patterns. So I'm going to guide you through this and then we're going to see some practice. So I'm going to show you how I use it, how to apply this theory on the markets when you do live training. I'm going to show you some examples, some past examples and some short uh, video clips where I used the theory before some moves happen and actually it helped me to predict what would happen. Chapter one, basics of Elliott Wave theory. So I, I really did my best to make things uh, accessible for everyone because as I said, the book that I've read is uh, really not easy to read. It took me like maybe I, I read it in total three times because I was reading something. I was not getting you know the full information of it. So I was reading it again. I was writing notes. I was, you know, trying to try to read it. Guys, you're going to see, but after maybe this course, it's going to be easier. And I encourage for those who want to understand even more than what I'm going to give you here uh, to read this book. So you have motive waves and you have corrective waves. All right. So motive waves are basically waves that are going into the direction of the market. So when the market is bullish, motive waves are waves that are going up. So those waves are, uh, can be an impulse or a diagonal. So they always have in it five waves as well. Then you have the corrective waves. So you have the zigzag, the flat and the triangle. So those five figures, so they can have three or five waves. The zigzag and flat, they have three waves and triangle has five waves. So here are the five patterns that you're going to see everywhere in the markets. It's and actually the other way around is true as well. Every pattern that you see in the market is one of those five. So now I'm going to give you some rules 
that are going to help you to actually identify what pattern are you are looking at. So let's begin with the impulse. So the impulse is the most iconic pattern of Elliott Wave's uh, theory. It's something you see everywhere. So I'm going to show you how it works. It has five waves, all right? First rule, three motive waves and two corrective waves. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so one, three, and five, those uh, that are in green are the motive waves, all right? Because this is a wave up and the inside this pattern, what is going up is motive. So one, three, five are motive and two, and four, you know, the red ones, they are corrective waves. So this is the first rule of an impulse. It has five waves. Then wave two never goes below wave one, all right? So basically this, the bottom of the wave, of the second wave cannot go below here, all right? It cannot uh, go below the starting of wave one, otherwise this won't be impulsive, you know? An impulse is something that is strong and that is, you know, uh, really pushing the market direction of uh, the waves, so for example, uh, up in this situation. Wave three is never the shortest. So this is to me the most important rule of an impulse. It's basically that the third wave cannot be the shortest, but it's usually the strongest. It's usually as well an impulse itself. So it has usually five waves inside it. And it's very helpful once you see a very strong and powerful move on the market, usually you can start from there and assume this, this is a third. So it's very helpful to actually then identify one, two, and potentially four and five that are coming. Then wave three always goes beyond wave one. So this is kind of a basic rule, but same stuff. You know, this needs to go up, this needs to be impulsive. So the third wave must, of course, go above the highest level of wave one and very important one as well. Wave four never enters wave one, guys. So wave four is starting here, finishing here. So this bottom cannot go below here. All right, guys, it cannot go here because otherwise this would be weak. You see, the fact that this level here is higher than this one means that actually the buying power is very strong in this pattern. And this is actually what is making it an impulse. I would like to discuss with you guys what is the meaning uh, behind each uh, wave of the impulse. So wave one, actually, so before an impulse, usually you have a strong move down and then uh, you have the rebound. So we call the buyers of the first wave of an impulse, the precursors, because those guys, they are the first to spot that the market is shifting. So for different reasons, it can be fundamental or it can be technical. But those guys, they are the first to buy and they actually uh, invert the powers of uh, the bear trend that was before this uh, impulse. Then you have the contrarians. So contrarians are people who like to basically take the opposite direction of uh, every strong move they see. You probably know people like this. I mean, you know, once something is going up too much, or, you know, for them it's too much, but nobody knows if it's too much or not, they usually like to sell. What's the reason behind? Just because they are waiting for this correction, you know? So they're contrarians. And they usually, for example, they start, they're gonna start selling here, they're gonna sell more here, more here, they're gonna average their position, and then they're gonna play this whole move down. So it's like a type of trading. Then you have the institutional clients that are entering in the game what I call the smart money guys, because those people, uh, so they are professionals of market, they can be hedge funds, asset managers, banks, people who analyze the fundamentals, people who show that the market has shifted and that are waiting for these contrarians to give them a nice level to buy. So those guys, they're gonna start buying here. They're even gonna start buying here. They're gonna buy here, 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 everywhere here. And they're gonna push this market higher. This is the reason why the third wave is so strong. So the volume are very strong as well, guys, uh, in this third wave, because uh, those investors, they arrive with big money and they do the same trade uh, all together. So they're gonna push the market very, very high. Then you have natural type of investors, the, the people who bought like, for example, here, 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 you know, those guys that basically buy everywhere and the asset managers and hedge funds that are buying here, 
uh, they need to take profit, all right, at the time. So they're gonna start selling here, 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 here. And they are, they're gonna create this fourth wave, all right? So for now, we have kind of only professionals of the market, you know? And this can be true in a you know, shorter time frame or even in a bigger time frame. So for example, this can be, for example, a few weeks, a few days, or a few months. And usually after that, you have what I call the ships. It's people who heard that people around them are making a lot of money and they become greedy. They want to do the same thing. They are thinking, why not me? Uh, the market is just going up, you know, and it's been usually, let's say it's like a few months and they are like, you know, very confident in the, in the fact that this market is very strong and that it cannot go down. All right. This is what we have before each crisis, guys. This is what we have in 2000, the internet bubble. This is what we had in 2007. This is what we had in 1928, all right, before the, the biggest crisis ever, the 1929 crisis. And this is typical behaviors of retail investors, usually those guys, you know, who don't know anything about the market and who just want to make some easy money. And actually, what is funny is that the people who are actually going to sell here and take some short positions against those people are the same guys that are, bought, that are buying here. So, you know, they buy here, they sell here. So usually they sell to the ships and then the ships buy more and they're going to keep selling to them. And eventually the market is going to revert. We're going to have some kind of a correction that can last the same few weeks, months, or even years. It depends on the time frame you're, you're looking. But it's always the same phenomenon. So ask yourself where we are right now, guys. To me, so this is another discussion, but very quickly I can give you my view. We are, I think, at the beginning of this fifth, fifth wave. And the, the fifth wave can last a long, uh, a long time, all right? So I think we're at the beginning of it. So maybe we're going to have a big rally for the coming uh, year or two years. Uh, and then we're going to have a market reversion. I'm done with the impulse. So like I said, it's the, I'm going to come back to this because actually once we're going to see all the other uh, patterns, you're going to see that they are all related to this one. So this is the most iconic one. This is the one that you always need to keep in mind. Try to remember these rules and to practice it and to try to recognize an impulse when you see it. Let's go to the next pattern which is the diagonal, all right? So diagonal is uh, a motive wave as well. It's the second type of motive waves. So diagonal has few rules as well. So some of them are same as the impulse. So for example, it has five waves, all right? Three motive waves, two corrective waves. So same thing, one, three, and five are motive waves and two and four are corrective waves. All right, so this is the same thing. Wave, wave two never uh, moves below wave one, same stuff, all right? Because it needs to go up. Wave three is never the shortest. So same here, you know, wave three cannot be the shortest from here to here. You're always gonna have more than from here to here or from here to here. And this is a rule that I'm gonna show you guys how you can use, for example, uh, to predict where wave five can go. If wave three is shorter than wave one, like here, then you know that wave five cannot go above, for example, this level. Otherwise, wave three would be the shortest. So if you are right about a motive wave, you can easily predict uh, in some situations the maximum level that wave five cannot go above. Then wave three goes below wave one, same stuff, all right? Uh, here it needs to be lower than here. And this is, guys, so the most important rule of a diagonal uh, is that wave four always enters wave one, all right? So this is wave one, as you can see, all right? And wave four is below, is here, below wave one. What is this telling you guys? It's basically just telling you that the market has weakness, all right? It's not like for the impulse. For the impulse, let me remind you guys how it was. Uh, you know, the market was buying here much higher. So wave four could not go below wave one. For the diagonal, actually, this is showing weakness. This is showing that the market is out of steam. So usually we see uh, diagonals, they can be leading on or ending. I mostly see ending diagonals. So they are the fifth wave of uh, usually this, you know, the fifth wave would be an ending diagonal and it's usually going to be in uh, this kind of wedge pattern. So wedge pattern is uh, when you have two, the support level and the resistance uh, level that are just converging to a same point. And here, usually you have a very low volatility, right? The market is just consolidating and then usually you have a breakout on the downside. So very, you know, 
interesting information and very useful is that when you see wave four entering wave one, you know that this is probably an ending diagonal. So if you're able to identify one, two, three, four before, then you know it's the last uh, pattern of the of an impulse, for example, and that you're probably going to have uh, the market reverting very soon. And wave four never goes below wave two. All right, so you know it, it it's still a motive wave, so wave four cannot go here. All right, if it was like this, then it's a corrective pattern. It's not uh, a motive wave anymore. So that's it for the diagonal. I'm gonna uh, once again show you some practical uh, use of all this uh, information once you spot it.